There are too many fires in Cebu City, metropolitan area. What are some of the solutions? We'll talk about, I have some ideas. We'll talk about some of that. Looking forward to uh, your suggestions, definitely. And uh, whether anybody would listen to our suggestions or not is, is another thing. Uh, I think they do have barangay inspections and that sort of thing, but this is in a very poor area. Um, and, you know, they, they, they put these houses together with anything and everything they can find, cardboard, wood, um, corrugated metal, and once it starts, they're very densely populated areas, um, narrow little street going in, and alleys, many, many, very, very narrow alleys, uh, wandering around through the different parts of these areas. Seems like we've had uh, several just in the last couple of weeks. I, I hear sirens. Sometimes I can see the smoke and such going on. Just a day or two ago, uh, off over in Lapu Lapu, I could see it from my from my balcony. Big fire over there. And uh, nine times out of ten, it's in these uh, what are often called squatter areas. The poor people that just build whatever they can on. Uh, properties that they don't own and uh, sometimes it's city-owned properties sometimes they're allowed to rebuild it just depends upon the area if it's a city-owned property the city will allow them to rebuild and uh, there is some effort to widen widen the narrow roads going into those areas so that fire trucks can get in there the next time there is a fire and my, my feeling is that uh, it's, it's not all of these. You know, I've seen so many of them since I've been here eight years. A couple of them just below my condominium. And uh, amazingly, most of the time, nobody gets killed in these. They, the people are able to grab a couple things and get out of there, but they lose all of their belongings, virtually all of their belongings. And it's not if there's going to be a fire in one of these places, it's when there's going to be a fire. So some ideas, uh, you know, other than completely changing and rearranging and um, going by some types of building codes, which isn't going to happen anytime soon, I don't think, um, you could place a lot of fire extinguishers um, rather close. That would cost you a lot more than uh, than putting these people up, supplying them with food and materials uh, that the brain guys have to do after these fires. They have to move them into perhaps a, a school, perhaps a, a brain guy hall. Now this, there was a pretty good breeze and as I continued uh, about every 30 minutes I'd get up take a little more video and it spread very quickly towards the south southwest you know prevention would be the best if you can prevent these fires uh, some education um, and then firefighting if you don't catch these things right away if you don't put them out right away you 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 might as well just get out of the area and that's what people do people people holler at their neighbors fire everybody runs because once it uh, once it gets out of hand which is only going to take a couple of minutes if you try to stick around to fight it with uh, a pan of water and a faucet you're you're, you're probably not going to live through the experience ungrounded electrical outlets uh, poor electrical wiring uh, cooking with charcoal, falling asleep with uh, things going, candles burning, a number of different reasons. Here's the only article I found about this uh, on uh, Cebu Daily News. Sandbag 2 fire, 7.5 million and counting, April 8th. So look at that. That That is just so densely populated and you've got all these people who have evacuated apparently and how do you get 
fire trucks, fire hoses into these areas. That is the major issue. So when it starts, and it starts in the middle here, here's a, it looks like a road here, and maybe a road over here, but very, very narrow. You may or may not be able to get a fire truck into these areas, and then you have to wind it through the narrow, narrow little alleys to get to the fire, actually. At the same time, uh, being very careful that you don't get trapped by the fire. Down in here to the uh, article, the massive fire that hit a densely populated area in Barangay Sambog 2 here on Monday afternoon, April 8th, has not been extinguished yet. This was, I think, about 6.15 p.m. And uh, a lot of the fire was down, but there was a lot of smoking, a lot of embers, so they had not uh, completely put it out by then, I think. It started about 4 in the afternoon, and I could see it out my bedroom window, and I heard all the, the sirens. In fact, there were sirens going almost all day, it seemed. I didn't see other fires, but just so many fires running. It was raised to 4th alarm at 5.01, meaning all fire trucks from Metro Cebu are needed to put out the blaze. At least 44 fire engines were dispatched as a fire already affected an area of 1,500 square meters. And the other very dangerous situation is if you bring a fire truck into this type of area and uh, the wind changes a bit and your fire truck is going to burn up. So they probably don't even want to try to get, get a unit into these types of areas. Uh, these these blazes, uh, the wind can can change very quickly. Sometimes I've got I've got a uh, balcony window facing kind of the east northeast and one uh, south southwest, and uh, I can have breeze blowing uh, in from one window one one minute, and uh, you know a few minutes later it's blown in from the other other direction, so the wind can change quickly here. So what are the solutions? Uh, I know somebody's going to say, don't let them rebuild. Well, that brings up another problem then. Where are you going to house them? And uh, there are some housing projects going on, but not not nearly enough. I know over by, uh, over by um, Park Mall, there was a big a huge vacant lot um, just overgrown with with weeds and tall grasses and they've cleared that all off and and they're bringing in uh, what uh, big panels pre uh, to pre-assemble one-story houses there and apartment type blocks um, and you know that will house probably a few thousand people but you know these fires happen every week and displace displace 500 to 1500 people so uh, you know that's a lot of people to find new places for them to live there's another area not very far from there where they're building uh, i think it's almost ready for occupancy perhaps uh, like a four story uh, apartment building and i suspect you know there is the old uh, mandawi Across from Park Mall, there's there's the old, uh, oh, what do they call it? The Mandawi Convention Center, I think, that was damaged in earthquake and typhoon in 2013. And it just been sitting there. And, but that whole area that is walled off is full of, uh, full of people that build these types of things as well. And I suspect that they're going to move some of those people because they're demolishing that uh, that convention center it, it it's in it has been in very bad shape for for many 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 years and I think a casino hotel casino is going to build a hotel casino uh, on that lot here in the uh, coming years so uh, all those people will probably be moving across the street to those houses I suspect Anyway, what are your what are your views about that? What are the solutions? Thanks for watching. Take care. Safe travels. See you next time.